Finishing mature whiskey in a different type of cask, like a wine, rum, or sherry cask, is a common practice these days, but it hasn't always been that way. David Stewart of the Balvenie was one of the pioneers of cask finishing. David, can you tell me a little bit about the early days of finishing whiskey in casks? What inspired you to start that? Well, we're going back into the 70s, really, and then into the 80s. In the 70s, we had the Balvenie eight years old Founders Reserve. And then when it got into the early 80s, I was asked to create another range called the Balvenie Classic. And I, I thought, well, how, should, how would I work this to change the whiskey from what we already had? So I thought, well, what would happen if we actually remove whiskey from American oak barrels and fill them into European oak sherry casks? So that's what we did. We had three expressions. We had a no age statement, classic, with a 12 years old and an 18 years old. So I experimented around about 81, 82, just sampling this whiskey of these three different expressions every month, passing samples around the family and the company, people who knew about whiskey. And gradually, after six months, six, seven, eight months, we were quite delighted with the, the way the whiskey had evolved in, in the sherry casks. It picked up a lot of colour and, and complexity and rich, spicy flavours. So we decided to go ahead and, and bottle these three different expressions in 1983. So that was a Belveni classic. And our core range is, is now all, um, all about finishes. We've now got a rum finish. We bring rum in from the Caribbean and, and fill it into our barrels at the distillery and, and season our barrels with rum and, and th then put the whiskey in and leave that for another six months. So is there a, for the different types of casks, rum versus port, sherry, is there a sweet spot in terms of how long the whiskey should stay in there for the, the perfect finish? Well, it, it can differ. I mean, we've got different finishing times. We roughly say nine months for the, the double wood and six months for the Caribbean cask and, and a shorter finish for the port wood. So it's, it's all about maintaining the, the kind of quality style of Balvenie without overpowering, uh, overpowering the whiskey. So it's getting just that right time. And we, we, we know, we, we, I would say nine months for the double wood, but it might be eight months, it might be ten months, because we're sampling every month after six months. Mm. And the key, key for me is to make sure that we're maintaining the consistency of all of our core range, that they taste the same. So you've brought today the Balvenie 17 year old Doublewood. This is just like regular Balvenie 12 year old Doublewood, but five years older? Uh, that's it. it is. This, this particular whiskey was launched in 2012 to celebrate my 50 years in the company. But you're right, it's, uh, it's, uh, we leave it for five years longer in the American oak barrels. Very much the same process as a 12-year-old, and we leave it in, and we transfer that whiskey into first full European oak sherry cast, and leave it there for roughly nine months again. Mm -hmm. so, so this has given us a, a, a older expression, deeper flavours, slightly more oaky, a nice toffee sweetness, but still delicate spiciness, and still that nice honey, honeyed vanilla sweetness you get from the American oak barrels. Mm, let's taste it. Okay. You like it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Good. that that honeyed sweetness that you were just talking about that comes from the 17 years in American oak. But then right sliding into the finish, those spices, a little bit of chocolate, some some citrus peel maybe uh, that I assume is is the sherry oak influence. Yes, it is. It, yeah, there's just citrus notes in Balvenie, but yeah, uh, you've got that nice delicate but spicy flavors as well and quite a complex, rich Balvenie. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done a cask finish that didn't work out? Well, I've done, yeah, we've done a few. It's not always been a success. We just, um, I'm given a pretty free hand just to bring in casks and try it. Generally just small quantities, it might just be 10 casks. We've brought other spirits in, that have, you know, brandy, almanac, cognac, red and white wines that, and that haven't worked for us. If it doesn't work, if I say it doesn't work, then we don't go ahead and bottle it. So it's not always been a success. We didn't, we weren't sure that rum would work, another spirit, but rum, because of its that sweet and sugary sweetness that you get in rum, seemed to work with, well with bal Balvenie. Mm. Whereas these other spirits more kind of dominated the flavour of Balvenie and just, it just it made it drier rather than, than sweeter. So we always just experiment. We've got a few things in our warehouse. We've got to try and keep a, a step ahead. So we're always working ahead of the game and just and maybe in the, f in the years ahead, we'll be able to launch one or two more finishes mm. from, from casts that we haven't done previously. So I should stay tuned. You and should wait stay to see tuned. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That sounds great. Well, then, when the next unique type of cask finish comes out, I want you to come back so we can taste it together. Okay, great. I'd right. love to do that. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot, David. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.